Hey guys, glad to see you here. Hopefully you're having a wonderful work day. I thought I'd interrupt you with something new, this Starship Midweek Update series. Instead of just getting the usual one SpaceX update from me, now you're gonna get this many, so long as there's something to update you on, that is. Hopefully it fills your Kevin cravings. I wish my wife got those. But anyway, today I got an entire pile of Starship information to share with you. So let's get started. Last week, we watched as SpaceX placed yet another hull ring section atop of their Mark I Starship down there in Boca Chica, Texas, but it turns out it wasn't the last. Just after releasing my video, Austin Bernard captured SpaceX equipping Starship with one more, and the vehicle now has what appears to be an umbilical locks port. Also, the final fourth bulkhead for the fuel tank is staged and currently being prepped for its installation. As we went over in our last episode, a canard or aileron of some kind has been seen on site and has since been captured being moved around. Everyone in the community is curious as to where exactly this thing is going to end up. We should find out prior to September 28th, because that's when Elon's Starship presentation in Boca Chica will be, and he said the vehicle will be put together by then. He'll also be addressing all those excess super heavy rings lying around at both sites, and furthermore, his presentation will once again be live streamed. And if you want somebody to watch it with, I'm going to be here for you. As you are well aware, Starship's heat shield technology has been tested both with the CRS-18 Cargo Dragon capsule and Starhopper's 150 meter flight. But now it's becoming a little more clear that while CRS-18 tested the heat resistance of Starship's tiles, Starhopper was testing the ways in which they were mounted to the steel hull. In this case, they were mounted mechanically. If you're like most of us and ever wondered if and how Starship will be implemented with an abort system, you can now rest easy. Elon tweeted up a storm the other day addressing this very issue, and yay for me, I was tagged in it. I got so many notifications from people chiming in on the conversation that I thought my phone had become epileptic. So what's the plan for Starship's current abort procedures? Well, apparently there currently aren't any, but according to Musk, there probably should be. The vacuum engines would be dual bell and not capable of gimbling, and thus possibly stabilized against Starship's hull. I'm gonna break out my old trusty Starship Lego model, hopefully without breaking it. Now I know this thing isn't updated, okay? I'm waiting till after the presentation to do that. But what Elon's talking about here are these exterior Raptor engines. And he's saying what they could do is just completely permanently mount these to the edge of Starship's hull. That way they won't move when a lot of pressure goes through them. And meanwhile, the center engines will still gimbal. Gimbal you. Oh, the center one doesn't isn't supposed to gimbal apparently, but these outer ones do gimbal. It's like the exact opposite of what I have here. I got a lot of work to do. But I know what you're thinking. How can just a handful of Raptor engines clear enough distance between a massive Starship vehicle and a super heavy booster just below it that's undergoing a rapid unscheduled disassembly? Well, at first it wouldn't. Elon showed off some fancy arithmetic that basically says that Starship would inevitably still be near the explosion as it occurs, but could be able to withstand the low pressure wave and fly out of it. He also said that the Raptor turbines can spin up extremely fast, which gives the engines more oomph. They just don't test them that way. But rapid turbine spin up can no doubt do some pretty gnarly damage to Raptor's internal hardware. The violent vibration alone is why most rockets don't light up all their engines at once on the launch pad come T minus zero. And the thing with Starship is, there are no parachutes for emergency landings. These highly stressed out Raptor engines would not only have to survive the super heavy booster explosion, as well as their own ignition, they would then have to restart in order to land the ship safely. So I'm gonna show you a demonstration of this, not because I have to, but because I wanna play with my Lego. Starship is sitting on the super heavy booster, probably on the launch pad. Super heavy booster suffers an anomaly. It's catastrophic, dun dun dun. Super heavy booster starts to explode, gross. Uh, we should simulate that, right? Hiya! I'm just kidding. I would never do that, sucker. All right. It's exploding. Bam, the Raptor bam, engines at the bam, bottom of the Starship bam, start to ignite bam, instantaneously, bam. hopefully. And kaboom! It pulls away. Oh, yeah. This blows up. Fire starts to engulf Starship, but it pulls out of there like the Millennium Falcon when it destroys the Death Star and Return of the Jedi. Nerd! If you like to own this model, I'm selling it for $1 million. But what do you think about this seemingly daunting engineering problem? Brainstorm your thoughts in the comments below. SpaceX has filed a formal request with the FCC concerning the launch of Starship, which entails their communication plans for the 20 kilometer flight. The launch will include a pre-launch checkout test of the TC uplink from the ground station at Boca Chica and experimental uplink testing from the ground station at Boca Chica during descent. What this filing also means is that Starship will launch no earlier than October 13th. Oh yeah, and bonus fact for you. After Mars, Elon has its sights on Callisto and Ganymede, both are moons of Jupiter, Titan, a moon of Saturn, and Ceres, a dwarf planet in the asteroid belt. 
Well, that concludes today's video. If you'd like to see more of these Starship midweek updates, go ahead and break that like button. Seriously, break it. If not, that's cool too. We can always go back to just doing Saturday mornings. But I also want to thank my eccentric Patreon members who support this channel. If you'd like to join the fam, there's a link in the description below. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, Godspeed.